You ever wonder what happened to those murder hornets? 2020 was like a terrible final season. At one point, there was a giant murder hornet storyline that everyone just forgot about. These were highly venomous Asian giant hornets, which erase about 30 to 50 names in Japan a year. In 2013 alone, they turned 42 people in the past tense in one Chinese province. And apparently, they illegally entered the United States with the first sightings happening in Blaine, Washington towards the end of 2019. Which is kind of a problem, because one hornet nearly unsubscribed Cody Peterson from life, so imagine getting jumped by an entire nest. Not only that, but these murder hornets will slaughter entire beehives. So what happened? Well, the Department of Agriculture made it clear that we couldn't give them a chance to establish in America. Basically, the government said it was on site. Hornet nests that were found were quickly put out of commission for the sake of our way of life. One nest had allegedly 200 queen hornets before they were all put in a pack. So yeah, we went to war against hornets, but the thing is, it might not be over. On June 4th, a dead dried hornet was found near Washington State. Now scientists believe it was an old hornet from last year. But these hornets typically emerge from hibernation in July, and all the homicidal hood flies that we didn't kill off could be returning for a season two. But two things, one, this murder hornet is actually rarely ever lethal to people, and two, wildlife experts believe it would be impossible for them to become a permanent resident invasive species in America. Basically, Asian hornets are like TikTok trends of performative activism. A big deal in the moment, but they're overblown and they don't last that long. That being said, they typically reemerge from hibernation in July, so if they are planning to run it back, it's gonna be tough for the camps. This episode of Australia is a f***ing simulation. This cow was caught eating something suspicious. When the worker took a closer look, he realized the cow was slurping a whole ass snake like it was a strand of mom's spaghetti. This wasn't some F-tier garden snake. It was a sand python that got turned into a cow's chew toy. Now to be fair, cows have always been... off. Technically, they're herbivores, but cows have been known to chew on the carcasses of other dead animals. In Australia, that often means dead kangaroos. They'll sometimes even suck on the bones of other cows, but the snake? That was new. Farmers believe they do this because low levels of phosphorus in the soil means less phosphorus for the cows. Not enough phosphorus can cause weaker bones, and for cows, it can lead to botulism, which is bad. Phosphorus deficiency can also lead to osteophagia, where an animal like a cow chews or eats the bone of another dead animal. And you thought they were innocent, nah, they ain't safe either. This cow is low on vitamin P, but instead of taking a supplement, he said f*** it and decided to take a python instead. That sentence makes no sense anywhere else in the world but Australia. Moral of this video, Australia has no food chain, it's a f***ing free-for-all. We finally have to talk about it. Koalas are just dumb. Like, they're, they're literally their own biggest obstacle. I just want to add to the koala slander real quick because there's one special thing about them that not nearly enough people know. And you know me, I don't really need a reason to put them on blast. So y'all know eucalyptus, right? Now I'm going to ignore the fact that their entire personality is eating something that nature made abundantly clear is not supposed to be eaten. It's poisonous, hard to chew, and has zero energy, but of course a koala gon' koala. But that's not the problem. The problem is they literally can't even digest the one thing they insist on eating. They need special gut bacteria to break down the toxins of the eucalyptus. And of course an animal that isn't smart enough to understand rain isn't going to comprehend probiotics. But to get the bacteria and you know, not starve to death, the baby koala koala will nuzzle up to the mother in the, you know, this position. The baby will tickle the mother until she releases a green paste called cecum fecal pap. For months, the baby will eat its mother's poop just so it can spend the rest of its life nerfing itself by eating eucalyptus. Koalas have been around for about 25 million years, yet the best thing they can do is eat sh and look cute. To be fair, lots of animals do this, but koalas eat sh just for something that isn't even worth eating in the first place. Snakes like the python can actually swallow things bigger than their head. A lot of people think snakes unhinge or dislocate their jaws to do this, but that's not what they do, it's actually weirder. That's cause for snakes, the bones in the lower jaw called the mandibles aren't connected the same way they are with us, instead they're held together by a stretchy ligament. These two jaw bones work independently and can actually spread apart from each other, which you can see here. I really hope down bad Mike don't see this shit. That demonic yawn is how snakes like pythons can deep throw things they honestly have no business even attempting. For reference, if you were built like a python, you'd be able to swallow a whole watermelon without chewing and without using your hands. All thanks to those two bones. Because those two jaw bones work on their own, they can slowly inch whatever they're trying to eat towards the back of their throat, basically like walking their jaw over their victim. A snake's mouthpiece is so flexible that the bigger ones like anacondas, boas, and pythons can swallow deer, goats, alligators, and even small cows. If it makes you feel any better, this is an emerald tree boa, and since they're non-venomous, they're basically harmless. Might cost you a few extra sessions of therapy, but I promise you there's worse snakes in your life. You probably dated them. Yeah, whoever designed this shrimp was on LSD. The mantis shrimp just makes no sense as a living animal. Let's talk about it. This shrimp can throw a punch at 50 miles per hour. Not only can they throw hands faster than literally anything else on Earth, the acceleration of the punch is basically the same as getting hit with a 22. Yeah. God gave them the right to bear arms and they act accordingly. Their punch is so quick that it causes a cavitation bubble to form, and when it pops, it's hotter than the surface of the f***ing sun. Built like an underwater pride symbol with the left-handed Thanos, the mantis shrimp hunts by repeatedly striking the shells of clams, snails, and crustaceans until the shell splits open. It's that and the heat of getting pimp slapped by Lucifer that makes it easy for the mantis shrimp to turn its prey into a prayer. And if it wasn't for the fact that they can shatter aquarium glass, they'd actually be dope pets. Not even the only crazy thing about them. Their eyesight is so advanced that they can see polarized and ultraviolet light that's invisible to us. And where we have three color receptors, God said why not and decided to give this shrimp 16. They don't see more colors than we do the way some people think, but each row of photoreceptors is designed to detect a different kind of light. 
Oh, and they have 360 vision, because nature really pimped out the shrimp for no reason. 10 things you didn't know about the world's grumpiest cat. It's a palace cat, and it's basically the snow leopard's little brother found in the same Central Asian mountain ranges like the Himalayas. They're one of the highest cats on the planet. One palace cat was found 18,300 feet in the mountains. That's as high as more than 14 Empire State Buildings. It's around that high where your body would start to fall on you because of lack of oxygen. Palace cats can survive being that high because just like snow leopards, or ice tigers if you know you know, they have huge lungs, a powerful heart, and massive nasal cavity to pull in more air. They are massive introverts, and the only way they ever tolerate each other is when they want to make more of themselves. They're so good at surviving where they honestly have no business that when you take them out of the mountains, they actually start to struggle, which is why they're a bad idea for a pet. Also, they're closer to cougars, ocelots, and servals than they are to domestic cats, but if you try to play him like a pet, he will remind you. Also, you'll probably never see one in a zoo. Nature made them so good at living in the mountains that they literally can't survive anywhere else, and when you take them out, they usually get canceled by diseases that they wouldn't have to worry about up in God's attic. No fact here, I just think this is cute. They are Pikachu's biggest op. Their favorite food is the Pika that the shock mouse is named after. Google doesn't respect them, because if you look up ugly-eared cat, they pop up. Five sponge facts that might change the way you look at Robert. Most sea sponges are hermaphrodites, making them both male and female at the same time. And since they don't move, they get it on by either budding or by blasting Baby Maker onto the ocean, hoping it finds eggs to fertilize. Since they're an easy target for turtles and some fish, most sponges are toxic and use chemical weapons to defend themselves. The Caribbean fire sponge is actually poisonous enough to cause a severe rash to anybody who tries to hold it. Since some of the most toxic chemicals and science can be found in sponges, doing this could put you straight in the ER. These sponges can be used to fight cancer. Russian researchers isolated a compound from a sponge whose name gives me anxiety and synthesized it, and the result was a substance that killed prostate cancer cells. Starfish eat by ejecting their stomachs out their mouths, wrapping it around their prey, digesting it from the outside before retracting and now soupy remains back inside. Why am I telling you this? The starfish eat everything, including, yeah. Sponges were the first animals, and it's possible they're the sister group to every living animal on Earth. By that I mean a very, very, very long time ago, there was a common ancestor for every animal alive, and sponges were the first to diverge from that ancestor. If that's true, that means for everything. I'm talking about you, your dog, Harambe, that squirrel in your attic you haven't met yet. The sponge is a sister group for all of them. So basically, that shirt, that tie, and that thigh gap was the blueprint for life as we know it. The more you know. Eh, f*** it. That's cat please synopsis reticulata. The other day somebody called me a walking Pokédex and um, they're not wrong. That's a European badger. There's about five types of badgers and this little crackhead isn't one of them because honey badgers aren't true badgers. That family right there has a European badger, the Asian badger, and a Japanese badger. But American badgers are all the way down there. And that's because American badgers aren't even closely related to other badgers. Because when America was fighting for independence, apparently the badger was right there in them trenches. Nah, but for real, even though they're both badgers, they're not even closely related. These guys just look like they have their life together. He works a 9 to 5, picks up his kids from soccer practice, and invites his neighbor over for scones and tea every Tuesday. This dude is a corner store methy that swings broken beer bottles at anyone that makes eye contact. But they're pretty similar. American badgers will work with coyotes to hunt, and the Europeans will squat up with fox. They're both carnivores, but they'll eat anything that fits in their mouth, and both give zero f**ks. Because where Americans will square up with bobcats, cougars, and sometimes grizzlies, Europeans will step to wolves, lynxes, and sometimes brown bears. They also stab head with one badger murking an entire chicken coop. Sometimes European badgers will break into beehives and eat honeycombs while actively being stung by hundreds of bees. And I was not kidding about American badgers stepping to grizzly bears. They usually get clapped, but an effort was made and I respect that. Moral of this video, badgers are wolverines with short person syndrome and I can love them for it. Three animals that are way stronger than society taught you. First we have swans, because these pond pigeons are what geese think they are. Because where geese are all talk, swans can actually do damage. Not only can they allegedly break their arms with their wings, one took a man's life by drowning him. They've also murked dogs by beating them to death with those wings. You could try to humble a swan by grabbing its neck, but you're still risking your entire way of life if this hell tweety goes for your eyes. The biggest swan is the mute swan, which can weigh over 30 pounds. They're everything geese are on steroids. This is Patrick the Wombat. Wombats are keg barrels with legs. Wombat booties are reinforced with cartilage and fat, so if this furry bowling ball rear ends you, it could actually break your leg. They're so sturdy that they can put your car out of commission and sometimes even launch you off the road. Cause hitting a wombat's like hitting a curb with a face. Not to mention they defend themselves by running to their burrow and then using their backside to crush the skull of a predator against the roof of their burrow. And last we have donkeys. Eeyore ain't a bitch, he really bout that. Donkeys will not only delete a coyote, but they've been known to play with their corpse like a ragdoll. If you're a rancher, you're better off trading your shotgun for a donkey, cause you don't have to load a donkey. Cause they're black air force horses. There's a reason this homicidal barcode is more badass than horse. Seven deadly sins, but because I am the way I am, represented as animals. Envy's definitely the common house sparrow, because if she finds out her mate's been cheating on her, she'll proceed to butcher and abort the chicks he had with another female. Why do y'all go after everyone but the actual cheater? I don't get it. Lust is definitely the anti kindness because he won't stop spreading his seed until his immune system shuts down, his body disintegrates, and bro just becomes past tense. Bro really experiences post not clarity in the afterlife. Gluttony is the Argentinian wide mouth frog because they never stop eating. The only way this kamikaze stops is if it either chokes to death or literally tears its stomach open. These frogs will die trying to swallow something physically bigger than they are. 
Wrath is no one else but the hippo because every year they RSV at least 500 people to Heaven's House Party in Africa alone. And let's be real, the number's probably higher, we just haven't found the bodies yet. Sloth is a sloth because that just makes sense. Pride is a peacock because being a show off helps them bag a female, but it also helps them get bagged by a tiger. Those feathers make it harder for them to fly and impossible to see behind themselves, which is why its biggest flex often gets it buried. And greed is a Tasmanian devil because they can shove 40% of their body weight down their throat and they'll eat so much that they can't walk afterwards. 40% would be like the average man scarfing 140 burgers in 30 minutes. The more you know, let's talk about the blobfish. This is what they actually look like, it's just that they live up to 4,000 feet below the surface at the bottom of the ocean. That's almost three Empire State buildings. It's only when you drag them to the surface that they look like a deformed Kirby with a botched nose job. For those of you that try to slander my baby, this is what you'd look like if you had to live in his hood. Stay humble. If a normal fish lived that deep, its swim bladder would get forced out of its mouth and it would fold to water pressure. But the blobby has no swim bladder, no bones, and basically zero muscle. Which is why they can handle more pressure than a college student with immigrant parents. I, I would know. Basically by being built like gelatin, the blobfish uses water pressure as its structural support, which goes away if you bring them up to the surface. The blobfish only has one natural predator. Unfortunately, it's one of the most dangerous things alive. That's right, we are the biggest threat to a blobby's way of life since they can get caught in trawling nets and die. Now we don't know a whole lot about them since they live in Satan's basement, but some scientists believe there's less than 500 of them left in the world. Either that or they're elite at hiding and we're just bad at seeking. Anyway, they can handle 120 times more pressure than we gotta deal with, so y'all gonna stop slandering my blobfish. You can slander him though.